Can you give me some change? <laughs> oh, they come with the cup. <laughs> I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it. When I got to the UK, the first thing that stuck out to me were the roads. When I compare how the roads are designed in the UK to how the roads are designed back home, it's completely the opposite. When I'm crossing the road back home, if I'm supposed to look left, in the UK, I'm supposed to look right. If I'm supposed to look right, in the UK, I'm supposed to look left. So imagine how confusing that is. I remember this one time I was with a friend and we were crossing a road. I was looking at my left instead of looking at my right and I was going. And then she screamed at me. <laughs> Only for me to realize there was a car coming and I was crossing the road without seeing the car. Also with the cars, right? In Ghana, where the driver is sitting or uh, where the driver is supposed to sit, in the UK, the driver is sitting in the opposite direction. So the driver is close to the curb. Whilst in Ghana, the driver is away from the curb. The roads are very, very confusing to me. I don't know about other people, but it, confuse, it confuses me. Now, when I'm crossing the road, I look left and I look right because I don't want any issues. I still get confused, but now I look left and I look right. It doesn't matter if the car is coming from left or coming from right. At least I've covered left and right. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> don't even get me started on driving. I don't know how to drive, but at least I have hope, I think. <laughs> imagine if you've, if you've been driving in Ghana and you come here and you have to drive. I can only imagine how confusing. I know I will be confused as hell. So I can only imagine how confusing it will be for someone that drives in Ghana to come in the UK and start driving right away. Very, very, very confusing. Let's talk about self-checkout. You want to do self-checkout in Ghana? <laughs> you will sell out, but the money, you will never see the money. Self-checkout. <laughs> what this self-checkout is, is that when you go to a shop, okay, and you buy something, instead of you to walk to a cashier for the cashier to assist you in scanning and then you paying to the cashier, you do your own scanning and payments, right? There's a machine, you go and stand in front of the machine and then you scan your own product and then you make payments to the machine, okay? When you go to the machine, there's not really any security standing there looking at what you're doing. There is a camera, yes, but there is no security there looking if you are scanning everything or not. So imagine how this would be if it was in Ghana. The theft, that will happen. <laughs> I was shocked when I found out and how much trust is exercised in this country because ain't no way bro you are scanning by yourself and paying hey my first time that I went to the shop and I was scanning something so I bought my things and I got to the counter basically not the counter like the queue that goes to the counter and then they tell me well sell scan so ah I bought them up I go and stand there and I don't know how to scan like I don't know what to do so what happens is that whatever you buy in a basket you put it on one side you scan and then you put it on the other side if let's say you scan something and you don't put it on the other side it will not allow you to scan anything else basically it deals with weights you scan you put it on the other side I didn't know this it was my first time all alone in that supermarket so there was this one guy standing next to me so i'm like can you help like because i see him scanning and he was with his wife and a child so he's scanning and like it's going it's when i'm i'm just stuck there i don't know what to do there is no one to help so i just ask can you please i didn't even finish my sentence i just said can you please he says i don't work here and then the wife gave him a look and then he told me scan and put it here so i had to scan and put it there um, so that that was that 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 is my first first ever ex experience of self checkout. What we are usually used to back home is that you buy your things and then you take it to the cashier. They scan it for you and then they bag it for you and then you take your things and leave. In the UK, you can only go to the cashier when you have like a big basket, a trolley, basically. In some shops, even with the big trolley, you will still have to do self checkout when you buy your things and you go to the cashier and they scan it for you to make your payment they will not bag it for you you have to be bagging it whilst they are scanning so they scan they put it on the other side you take it and put it in the bag there is no one there to bag it for you like that was a shock to me 
i bought my stuff they scanned it it was on the other side i was waiting for it to be back and then the cashier was just looking at me like where where which planet is this one coming from i had to cook my back pack my things and leave <laughs> just so you know pack your things so they won't pack it for you unless maybe it's outside london i don't know but per my experience they will not pack it for you pack it yourself let's talk about the people okay <laughs> normally londoners they can be rude because everybody people are rushing to work someone is rushing to go and catch the bus because if they delay for like a second or a minute they might miss the bus and they would have to wait for 15 minutes for the next bus usually you get lost especially when you are new if you are going to ask someone a question the person will just ignore you and walk off and they come off as rude so people most people say that londoners are rude i've gone outside london the people there are really really nice but in london everybody is minding their business and like in a hurry for some reason you would think that when you travel abroad you will not see people like on the streets or begging or stuff like that ah in the train somebody will come sometimes you'll be going some drunk guy will be harassing you and you see junkies on the street i mean depending on where you live but sometimes when you're going to take the tube at the train stations you see them people drunk out of their mind people asking for money people harassing you coming close to you like can you give me some change <laughs> oh i'm with the cup <laughs> i was really shocked when i saw things like that i was like really i thought i thought that this was not it the other thing that shocked me was you would see our brothers our brothers and sisters on the streets preaching the word of god parts of them i mean but yeah someone will be holding a speaker and then preaching just like how we do back home some areas i mean not everywhere but in some areas like i think brixton um barking those places when you go there you would see someone preaching the word of god in the city center with a microphone or a speaker back home there is nothing like overtime and we don't get hourly um wages we get our minimum wage is per day 11 cities per day which is like one dollar per day not even per hour per day in the uk it's not like that um i think the minimum wage in the uk has been increased to 13 pounds right I don't know i'll put the right amount here and you can work over time you can actually earn over time so where i used to work sometimes we work late into the night we go to work at 9 30 sometimes we leave at 10 we leave at 8 we leave at 11 and you don't get overtime you only get your wage but yeah in the uk you do gain overtime which is really good if you are working late into the night you will get money for it but just you would have to be careful because if you follow that you might go ahead and sacrifice your health for money because you would want to keep working and working and earning your overtime gets higher tax deduction and the higher you earn the higher tax you pay it will be a point where someone earning fifty thousand a year is better off than earning seventy thousand a year what i've noticed about people in the uk is not that they are lazy they are very mindful of time okay so when you're at work and you're working with someone that is from the uk five o'clock they'll clock off and usually when you want them to like work overtime you literally have to beg them overtime gets higher taxes so what's the point of working overtime if they are going to get peanuts they would rather leave and do something else than like work overtime let's talk about food in the uk so you will get most of the african food here i think the only thing that i'm not getting here is consomme and smoked fish almost everything is here but when you are converting i mean it's expensive because why are you buying um plantain for 30 cities when you come here you'll be converting a lot after some time you will stop but the thing is if you keep converting you will never buy anything so i'm not going to tell you what to do because the african foods are very very expensive if you want already made african food you can go to uber eats and then order for wache but it depends on where you are if you are somewhere like dead cut where are you going to get wache to order you have to cook it yourself but in london you can order all those things online food is expensive especially the african foods 
Imagine being sick, but then you can't see the doctor. You have to call and book an appointment. But then when you call to book the appointment, they tell you the next available slot is next week. I don't think you understand how frustrating the healthcare system in the UK is for people like us. Because where I come from, I can walk to the hospital any day, see the doctor, speak to the doctor, and have a therapy session whilst I'm at it. In the UK, what surprised me was you can't just walk into the hospital. You have to call them and then book an appointment. You are sick, but you have to book an appointment before you can see the doctor. You can only walk into the hospital if it's an emergency. Then you go to A and E. When I was in Ghana, like the health system here was so glorified. So when I came here and I saw the reality of things, I was really shocked. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to like share if you care and subscribe i will see you in my next video bye